Yes, the neoprene jacket is tough, and NP wire will give better service than any drop wire that has been available so far, provided it is properly installed. That's a challenge to good workmanship. And good workmanship doesn't just happen. It's the result of careful attention to small details and particular attention at those points where trouble is most likely to occur. Studies of drop wire failures show that more than a third were preventable and that about 82% of these preventable troubles occurred in three general areas. Injury to the wire at dead end attachments accounted for 7% of preventable troubles. Abrasion at the pole or along the lead between poles accounted for 25%. Wear caused by the wire rubbing against trees, 50%. There are various ways of preventing abrasion by trees, such as trimming or placing wire guards. But the best way is to select a route where there will be the least possible chance of contact with buildings or future tree growth. It's in this selection of route that judgment plays an important part in providing good service. Now let's look at drop wire failures due to damage at attachments. The greater toughness of the covering of the neoprene wire should help to decrease these troubles. But the neoprene jacket can't do the job alone. Careful workmanship has a lot to do with it. For example, one safeguard against damage is to provide slack wire at the building in a smooth curve. A sharp bend in the wire, sooner or later, is almost certain to result in cracking of the wire covering. Therefore, avoid sharp bends. And be careful to avoid kinks when paying out the drop wire. Another source of drop wire trouble is breakage and other damage caused by excess tension. This tight drop is actually pulling the cable out of line. Make sure that every drop wire is given at least the required amount of sag. That's one of the most important things we can do to increase the service life of the wire. Minimum sags for spans of various lengths have been specified to avoid excess tension. Let's watch a demonstration that shows very clearly how sag affects tension in drop wires. Here, a length of NP wire has been suspended five feet above the ground between two points 100 feet apart. A scale has been placed at one end to show the tension existing in the drop. The specified minimum sag for a 100 foot drop from pole to building is two feet. Under these conditions, the scale shows a tension of 27 pounds. But now let's reduce the sag to one foot, which is one half the required minimum and see what happens. The tension has increased to 54 pounds, twice the amount it was before. Now, leaving the sag at one foot, let's add weights totaling 22 pounds. This is about the weight that would be added by a one quarter inch coating of ice. The tension in the drop wire has now increased to 135 pounds. However, if we lower the drop to two feet, which is the minimum sag specified in the practices, the tension with the additional 22 pounds of ice is reduced to 100 pounds. Now let's go a step farther. What will happen to the tension if we increase the sag from the two foot minimum and make it three feet? The scale now shows a tension of only 74 pounds. And remember, we still have that 22 pounds of ice on the wire. So you see, the amount of sag that we put in a drop wire varies its tension over a wide range. That's why it's always a good practice to provide more sag than the minimum required whenever there are no clearance problems. That extra sag is good insurance against drop wire failure. Of course, no two drop wire jobs are exactly alike. Slightly different situations call for the continual use of good judgment by the installer and repairman. But this good judgment, plus high quality materials and tools and methods outlined in system practices, plus good workmanship and careful attention to details, are all that's needed to meet any combination of conditions. Remember the trouble spot. Make a careful survey to select a route that will avoid interference from trees, buildings, and foreign objects.
Place drop wire clamps properly. Provide slack in the form of a smooth curve. Avoid kinks when paying out the wire. If paid out by hand, any tendency to kink can be avoided by occasionally reversing the coil. Provide at least the minimum required sag, and more if possible. Avoid chances for damage at the pole. Avoid nicks in the conductors. Bring the outer covering to the proper point within the terminal to protect the insulation and extend the insulation to the required distance from the washer to prevent crosses or short circuits. Observe good housekeeping. These things will help us cut down many of the troubles that result in more than a third of all drop wire failures. Attention to the trouble spots will help us build drop wires that will be a strong link in the chain of equipment and outside plant that makes possible dependable telephone service to our customers.